lot and, and uh, too many thoughts that we all want to go and implement. And here's the time to call Dr. Michael Hyde, Chief Information Officer for University of Illinois Systems, to give an overview, summary of all the discussions. Here is Dr. Hyde. Thanks much. My, my doctor is a PhD, and my wife, she's a veterinarian. So when we get introduced, it's Mr. Dr. Heights. He, he works at the University of Illinois, and this is Dr. Heights. She's the doctor that actually helps people. So how do we follow up to this meeting? That's, that's really the question that I have. Poonam had mentioned there's webinar series, there's other educational content. The Government Technology Foundation does a lot of interactions, and we want this to be the, the first of, of many. So while I was sitting here, I, I took the time to summarize what people were saying. Time is perishable. Predictive personalization is the future. Data is like a puppy. You have to train it. We need to increase tech presence in our neighborhood. Big data integration integrates the business team and the IT team. There will be millions of new jobs if we can fill them. We always need to ingest clean data. Is there something that you can do with big data that you can't do with small data? In the end, what's the, what's the end state? What's the question and what's the use case? The things around us are interacting with us, but the context is important with those interactions. Predictive analytics is moving out of the data warehouse cloud is secure, but where will your data live long term? You need to start the journey because analytics is an evolving process. Open source will be more and more popular with young people. And don't do a project just to do a project. Let the, the business lead. And I don't know if you've been looking at these screens. They have all these inspiring quotes from, from people that are up there. The, I like the Mario Andretti one the best. If, if everything seems under control, then you're not moving fast enough. <laughs> Uh, a couple comments uh, from me. Uh, the Gardner Group has been talking with the community about two things. One is the ability to give stuff away, and they're encouraging people to give stuff away. The other thing they're talking about is algorithms, meaning what are the predictive analytics, how do you assemble things that can take data in and, and spit something out. And we talked about giving things away. Uh, City of Chicago Open Data, Cook County Open Data. I'm at the University of Illinois. You can always do a Freedom of Information Act request and get whatever you want from the University of Illinois. But other people are developing things for free as well. Uh, General Electric has the, the Predix Cloud Industrial Internet Platform. And this is to take things, Internet of Things data in and do stuff with it using their proprietary tools. IBM has Bluemix, the development platform for, for analytics. It's something else you can sign up and use it for free and use it. And these are some of those open source platforms that our students will be using. From a cheap perspective, uh, Beam is a SaaS business intelligence in the cloud uh, product. You can easily analyze data just by signing up, paying a couple bucks, and, and using it. So my question to everybody in follow-up, what would be useful for the people in this room in terms of data? If government could provide data, could we have something like a data pond, where we bring the data, we have the sources, everyone in the audience has their companies, maybe it's competition between our students at the university and your companies. Would that be of any value to you if we followed up from this meeting uh, that way? From a personal perspective, uh, I have a, a son who has autism, so I look at things like cognitive computing and Watson. If Watson was sitting in the back of the room, watching all the students, he's looking at your eyes, right? He can see your voice inflection. He knows how you're answering the question. Wouldn't that data be beneficial for the teacher in the front of the room to determine, is this a misbehaving child? Is it autism? Did they just have a bad day? Those types of things can help. And then from a university perspective, the predictive personalization is going to be the key to academic success moving forward. Can I use adaptive learning in order to cast that curriculum that makes the student have the most success moving forward. And I don't know the answers to these questions, which is why I ask you, do we want to work on something together? Uh, we can follow up at lunch and talk about this, but I know that, that Poonam, uh, me, and everybody else on GTF will be willing to talk about ways to follow up from this meeting. Thank you, Poonam. Well, 
number nine gives some new insight, predictive, what do you call it, insight in education. That is something. And I must admit that I, I don't have the autistic kid, but one daughter that I had was always getting in trouble. And uh, she's fidgety, she can't sit straight, this and that. Now she is a topper in uh, IMSA. I don't know, maths and science academy. And literally, that was mother's cry, and may, I made the arrangement with the teacher to sit on the exercise, for, for her, she won't sit on the chair, she sat on the, the exercise ball, and worked a lot better. So if we know, instead of just trial and error, we can serve a lot many more kids in a lot many more better ways. Well, thank you, Poonam, for letting me be up here. I'm Kevin McDermott, and I'm the, uh, actually, I just found out yesterday that I'm heading up the webinar program. So here's what we're going to do. Actually, for anyone who has been a panelist, um, and I'm, I have not yet spoken to, immediately after this, actually, yes, before you get to eat lunch, we're going to ask you to come down the hall to a room, and uh, there is a very short video interview that we'll do. It really is like three minutes. A couple people have already been through it. You can vouch for the fact it's very fast. Um, but the idea will be to come up and tell us what would your webinar look like and if I were attending, what would I know at the end of it that I didn't know going in? So if you're, if you're a panelist and you're interested in doing a webinar, come see me afterward. And one last thing I'll say is that uh, when Alderman Howard Brookings is up here, I thought it was great because he said that part of his background was as a funeral director. And knowing how many IT projects fail, I thought that was a great background. So thank you, Poonam, if you're interested in the webinars, and we're still working this out, by the way. The webinars um, will be uh, available for members uh, at a different price that will be available for non-members. We're still debating whether they'll be quarterly or whether they'll be monthly. Probably we'll start slow and build up as we get more and more success. So thank you all for being here, and Poonam, thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And you know, there are some hints that I have been and they pull everything together, and without the background, everything falls apart. And there is our Sanjo now. Thank you. Sanjo um, moderated one panel for uh, one of our events. You must see that video. He got the life out of each attendee. <laughs> and, you know, every moderator that I have, we've been very, very lucky, but Sanjo is different. and. Um, would like to give take us a moment to give a round of applause to Sanjo Paul. No, I mean I, I listened to all the comments that we had. Um, I remember a saying from Jack Welch: "Change before you have to." You must have heard this or not, but I heard that. Then I figured out that Jack Welch actually plagiarized. Because that's what my wife has been telling for the last 15 years. <laughs> so it has been a wonderful experience today. A lot of good insights that we got from people. People had a lot of practical views on what needs to be done. People have the hunger and passion on both directions. What we need is partnership. Partnership at the commercial and the government sector, individuals and groups. And think about partnership as you having an umbrella which you can use in sunshine or storm, but you can walk together. So I just hope, Puna, what you've started here, it will see great uh, progress and future. Thank you so much. <laughs>